This morning we're going to be in the book of Ruth. It's a short book, only four chapters. It's in the Old Testament. It's the eighth book in uh, the Old Testament. We're going to be taking a look of, of those that are along the edge. Marginalization is the process of pushing a particular group or groups of people to the edge of society. There are both direct and indirect processes that don't allow them to be an active place in it. And we just heard of a story of a group of people that are on the edge of society, and that's kids without parents, whether they're orphans or need foster care. They're a vulnerable group. But there are other groups around us that if we would just open our eyes and take notice of them, there's the homeless, people with limited mobility or the low income. There's also the undocumented immigrants. And maybe a little closer to home for some of us, there's certain groups of elderly that are pushed to the side of society so that they're out of mind and out of sight. We recognize veterans earlier, and then there's certain groups of veterans who feel like that they've been pushed to the edge of society as well. And they, all these groups are, are people, and they're all around us, they're on the edge of society, and they're on the edge of belonging. And that's not something new to our generation or even our society. It goes all the way back to the Old Testament where people are feeling like that they're marginalized or pushed to the edge of belonging and on the edge of society. And we're going to take a look at someone who fits that description. And we're going to be in Ruth, the second chapter, but there was a lot that happened in Ruth chapter 1, and I'm just going to hit the highlights there of what happened in Ruth chapter 1. So it starts out that there's a famine in Bethlehem around the area. And so Naomi and her husband and two sons decide that they'll go to the next country over, Moab. And that they will live there while the famine's going on. Well, they lived there and they lived there long enough that the two sons ended up growing up and marrying Moabite women. And then tragedy befalls this family. First, Naomi's husband dies. Then the two sons die. And then there's no one to provide for these three women in this family. And so Naomi decides that she's going to go back to her people in Bethlehem. And she tells her two daughters-in-law, go back to your people so that you can start over in life. I release you. One daughter-in-law goes and returns to her people and then Ruth says, no, I'm going to stay with you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. And so the two of these ladies head off back to Bethlehem. Well, that's kind of hard for Ruth because Ruth is leaving her culture. She's leaving other family. She's leaving her language, her customs, and she's going to a place where she is going to be an outcast in society. She's going to be a stranger, an alien, a foreigner in this land that she's going to. But they go there and they go and they face the same problem that there's no one to earn a living for them. So Ruth decides she's going to go to a field and to gather some grain so that at least they have enough to eat. And that's where we pick up our story in Ruth chapter 2, starting in verse 6. And actually, I'm going to start in verse 5. So if you would stand as we read from God's Word. Boaz asked the overseer of the harvesters, Who does that young woman belong to? And the overseer replied, She is the Moabite who came from Moab, with Naomi, she said, please let me glean and gather among the sheaves behind the harvesters. She came into the field and has remained there from morning until now, except for a short rest in the shelter. So Boaz said to Ruth, my daughter, listen to me. 
Don't go and glean in another field. And don't go away from here. Stay here with the women who work for me. Watch the field where the men are harvesting. And follow along after them. I have told the men not to lay a hand on you. And whenever you are thirsty, go and get a drink from the water of the jugs the men have filled. May God bless the reading of his word. And you may be seated. One of the first things that we see in the relationship of Boaz and Ruth is that Boaz acted with compassion. So we need to act with compassion for those that are along the edge. Now, when I was growing up and we went on vacation, my family camped out a lot, and so we were always driving somewhere. And uh, way back then, uh, there was always cars broken down on the side of the road. Maybe it was a flat tire or uh, some other car problems. And as we would whiz by them, my mom would always say, well, God bless them. And that was the end of our compassion. And I chuckle at that, but every time I see someone broken down on the side of the road, what comes to my mind? Oh, God bless them. But that's the end of it. And if we're honest with ourselves, sometimes that's the end of our compassion for other people. We look at their situations, we look at their life, and we just say, God bless you, and we just keep going. And sometimes we move to the other side so we don't even have to say that. And if we look at the definition of compassion, it says, feeling a deep sympathy and sorrow for another who is stricken by misfortune. And if that were the only part of the definition, we would be okay with that because that would fit with us saying, well, God bless you. Because we have sympathy or maybe sorrow for the misfortune that they're having. But the rest of the definition says this. Accompanied by a strong desire to alleviate the suffering. A strong desire to alleviate the suffering. You see, Boaz, when he came and saw all the workers, he knew everyone who was there. He was probably even familiar with those that are along the edges collecting grain, except there was one person that he didn't know who it was. And he said, who is this woman? What's her story? How did she get here? And, and why is she here? Is she related to someone we know? What's her story? He had compassion for Ruth in this situation. And just like Boaz, we need to be comp compassionate. We need to start with noticing the people that are along the edge. Sometimes we're so focused in life that we're only looking What's straight ahead of us? And there's people that are hurting, people that are left out, people that have needs that are all around us. We just don't have the eyes to see. So the first part of compassion is we have to notice them. Just as Boaz noticed Ruth. We have to be aware of their situations and then we act with compassion. And when we see their needs, we begin to step into their world and into their brokenness to offer help. It's just not a feeling, but it's a feeling mixed with actions. And the second thing that we see from our story in Ruth is that we need to give generously. Boaz is a compassionate man, and he just doesn't live out the letter of the law. Now, you may think that this is a great thing of Boaz, that he's allowing people who are not part of his family and workers to come along the edge of his field to gather some grain. But that was not only a custom back then, it was the law. And we find that in Deuteronomy 24 where it says, When you are harvesting in your field and you overlook a sheaf, do not go back and get it. Leave it for the foreigner, the fatherless, the widow, so that the Lord your God may bless you in all your work. When you beat the olive trees, do not go over the branches a second time. Leave what remains for the foreigner, the fatherless, and the widow. When you harvest the grapes in your vineyard, do not go over the vines again. 
Leave what remains for the foreigner, the fatherless, and the widow. Remember that when you were slaves in Egypt, that is why I commanded you to do this. God reminds the Israelites that the reason that they're not to completely strip bare their land is to help out those who are less fortunate for whatever reason they find themselves in those situations. And it's also to remind them of God's faithfulness to them when they were in Egypt, when they had nothing, when food was scarce, when they were slaves, and how God provided for them. So every time that they would allow the foreigner, the fatherless, the widow to glean along the side of the fields, they were reminded of God's goodness for them. And it also says in Leviticus 23, when you reap the harvest of your land, do not reap to the very edge of the field or gather the gleaning of your harvest. You shall leave them for the poor and the alien. I am the Lord your God. So it was not only just a law for Boaz to allow Ruth and others along the edge, but we see that he was generous. That he was generous. And he goes beyond the letter of the law. And if you look in the, there in the second chapter of Ruth in verses 14 and 16, we find these words. At mealtime, Boaz said to her, come over here. Have some bread and dip it in the vineyard. And when she sat down with the harvesters, he offered her some roasted grain, and she ate all she wanted and had some left over. As she got up to glean, Boaz gave orders to his men. Let her gather among the sheaves and don't reprimand her. Even pull out some of the stalks for her from the bundles and leave them for her on the ground to pick up. And don't rebuke her. Generous was Boaz with Ruth. He went above the bare minimum of allowing her to be on the edge and brought her close in. You see, Boaz was generous on purpose. He was generous on purpose. I heard a story of a cowboy who went needed health insurance, so... If you've ever done health insurance, you know there's a whole list of questions and things that you have to fill out. So he and the uh, insurance agent sat down and worked their way through all the questions. And then the insurance agent said, have you ever had an accident? The cowboy said, no, never had an accident. And the agent was perplexed and said, really, not even one? He said, well, you know, last year I was bit by a rattlesnake and then my horse kicked me in the ribs and that laid me up for a while, but... Never had an accident. He goes, you don't consider that an accident? He goes, oh no. They did that on purpose. <laughs> you know, what we do with our generosity needs to be done on purpose. To those who are on the edge, our generosity needs to be done on purpose to help them. We don't just need to do something so that we can have a warm feeling inside or pat ourselves on the back for saying, well, I did something. But it needs to be done on purpose to help them. We need to be generous in meeting those needs of those who are on the edge. And we need to begin to see ourselves as an instrument of God's blessing to other. He has given us resources and talents and time, and He wants us to use those to be a blessing to other people. We should look for ways that we can be a conduit of God blessing to one another in the world and showing goodness and mercy that the Lord has shown us and we can show that to others. We need to act with compassion. We need to give generously. And we need to participate in acceptance. The first two may be a little easier for us. This third one maybe a little higher hurdle for us to get over is to participate in acceptance. You see, Boaz met Ruth. He greets her not as a stranger, but calls her into his family and addresses her by my 
daughter. He welcomes her not only to his field, but also into his family. And by doing that, he provides protection. And we read in there where he told his hired hands and his servants not to lay a hand on her, to protect her, and not to correct her, because that's not what they were supposed to do to a member of his family. He provided protection, telling his workers to leave her alone, and he encouraged her to drink from the same drink that he set aside for other people in his family. When we get involved with other people's lives, it's a little messy, but when we do, we help solve problems. We strengthen our society. We improve lives when we're involved with other people. We connect to others. And remember that every rescue needs a rescuer. And God may be wanting you and I to be that rescuer for someone else who is along the edge. Boaz received Ruth becomes a picture of how Jesus receives us. We see that Boaz offered Ruth grace and protection and provision. And when we become part of God's family, he shows us that same grace and mercy protection and provision for our lives as well. When Ruth came into Boaz's family, she had drink to satisfy her thirst, food to satisfy her hungry, fellowship with other workers. And when we come into God's family, we receive those same things. The things that we long for, we find satisfaction and fulfillment in our relationship with Jesus Christ. We have fellowship with other believers. And together we are able to help others who are along the edge. If we will just look and notice. You know, at times in life, because of our own situations, sometimes we don't feel like that we have anything left to give. That we're doing all that we can do just to survive and maintain ourselves. The great thing about God, His well never runs dry. As a matter of fact, His well overflows with grace and mercy to all who come. And we can help lead other people to experience that same relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, you may be here today in your brokenness and you may realize that you've never experienced that kind of relationship with Jesus Christ. But you want to experience His peace, His forgiveness, His protection, and His blessings in your life. In just a few moments, we're going to have a time where we stand and sing. And if you're wanting to take that next step in your journey toward a relationship with Jesus Christ, I'd love to visit with you about that. Or you may be here this morning, and as we've been talking about those along the edge, that God has placed someone in your mind and on your heart who maybe you've been overlooking. You know they're there, but you've maybe avoided them. And he's saying, I need you to bring them in closer so that they can have a relationship with me. We're going to, and during this time of where we stand and sing, maybe you need, there's a burden that you have for a person or a group of people that you just want to lift up here at the altar and lay that here before the throne of Jesus. And you want to come forward and pray for them. However, God is speaking to you this morning. Don't miss how He's wanting to use you to reach those who are along the edge.